since they don't do any testing at all, you can just walk in, call yourself a female, not be trans. Trans do people it. are actually do it, Jane. Do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like goddamn, who is doing this? And I, I also ask, who is this for? Who is this segment for? Like, who are you appealing to? Who's like, oh yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah, women could just walk in at any time, and if they don't genetically test them, if they don't find the chromosomal imbalance, then they won't know. All right, so I saw this viral clip going around on the internet um, of basically Jenk uh, debating Francesca, uh, who has obviously been on the show, a little bit biased, friend of the show, a uh, huge fan of both her and her husband's work. Uh, I think she's awesome. Uh, you should go check out The Bituation Room uh, as well as her other work. Uh, she does fantastic stuff. But I did see Anna tweet this, and it says, I'm going to get destroyed in the mentions with mockery and hate, and maybe I will regret this, but whatever. We have to try harder to meet people with different perspectives from all walks of life with just a modicum of grace. I'm not saying be naive, but hear people out in good faith. Don't immediately assume the worst. In what world did you think this take was going to get you filled with mockery and hate? Oh, because of the, the new audience that kind of just pours into the replies. And when you get quoted, I, I see all the same kind of right wing reply people. Suddenly they found my post. Oh, OK, so that's uh, there. I, I get it. OK, that seems again, seems like a below bare minimum kind of a take, right? Like probably should meet people with different perspectives with respect. But then when I saw the clips from this, I realized. No indication Khalif is trans. So the Olympics thinks it's fair for a genetic male to punch a woman so hard in the face she quits and cries as long as it says female on her passport. And they're going to let this guy keep beating up women in Paris and they're just going to hand him a gold medal for it? So that was obviously gross. I mean, it was Jesse Waters. You knew that it was going to be pretty gross. It also represents another retreat on the right where before they would claim that they want to focus on biological women who have the right genitals. Well, now that's not good enough. So he's taken a step back from biological woman to genetic woman, which doesn't even mean anything. But that's where we're at in terms of their understanding of what exactly a woman is. But what you saw right there is a story that's been literally everywhere. I believe last night every single Fox program had a segment on this, a story that had already been debunked for hours and hours by the time they went live. Hey, don't scroll away. D -d -d -d. Come back, come back. It's, it's one minute. No, I'm going to be watching the whole segment. I, I'm on board. Come on, Jank. But despite that, we're supposed to do this thing now where we try to provide information. Oh, John's awesome. A whole bunch of TYT hosts are awesome, by the way. I, I, I've i always said that, like, just because you're working, by the way, to people who are being like, how the fuck have none of them left TYT? It's like, they could all be in contracts. They could, they could be in contracts that are very, very expensive to get out of, right? It could, could be a two year, could be a five year. Uh, and yeah, the, the, you can you can break your contract, but that, that could require, I mean, that might come with penalties. I don't know. I, I don't know what their situation is. I would be way more upset if they were on TYT and every other host just started parroting uh, the whole Anna and Cenk, uh, you know, weird copaganda transphobia arc. But I haven't seen that. I've seen John be consistent. He has been uh, like, you know, he still has, a massive platform on TYT. Uh, it's it's probably best that TYT doesn't have only hosts who agree with again Anna and Jenks for really weird and bizarre uh, perspectives on all of these things. So yeah, I, I, I have nothing bad to say about John. I think he's still awesome. Who sway these people and bring them back with evidence and logic when neither evidence nor logic got them to the dark place they're in? But sure, let's spend a couple of minutes doing that. So um, Khalif is an amateur boxer. Uh, won a silver medal at the 2022 International Boxing Association Championship, had previously gotten uh, a silver back in the, the previous Olympics. Uh, IBA President Umar Kremlev claimed last year that a previous disqualification from a competition last year were because, quote, it was proven they have ex- So you know what is so profoundly fucked across the board about the story, by the way? This, first off, is a discredited institution. There's a reason why, like, you know, they're not uh, respected by the Olympic Committee in the first place. This is the origin of the whole XY chromosome. 
But that XY chromosome, that, that, that it was proven, the XY chromosome, that man, man chromes, the, the man chromosome. Uh, so th this actually hasn't been proven first. Uh, this is an individual. She uh, uh, both identifies as a woman, uh, was born as a cis woman. Uh, she was identified as a woman at birth. Um, has, yes, higher levels of testosterone than other competitors, perhaps, in her field, as do all women and all men. We all have different amounts of testosterone. That, that, that is a thing that varies among us. That, yes, that, that, that is 100% true. She's good at her sport. She's not the best. Her track record is not flawless, right? I think prior to these Olympics, she was still looking at, what was it, like 14 and 6, somewhere around there. She had lost previously at the Olympics. No one talked about her back then. Not a single right winger was just like, oh my god, biological male competing in this. Oh, she lost. Uh, that, that wasn't a thing. But once again, we have two things simultaneously happening. It's, uh, it was assumed immediately that she was trans because they, they're all so brain poisoned at this point. It's just like anything that uh, is mentioned, in, like woman good at thing, trans, tra trans, trans, trans. Uh, no, no, w women can also be really good fighters. Uh, that, that's a thing that women can be. Uh, so that's bizarre. Uh, the misogyny of it all, just like the second a woman is accomplished in something, oh, it's gotta be a guy. Oh, it's, it's gotta be a dude. Like, like, what, woman did something that wasn't shopping? Or cleaning? Or making me a sandwich? Yeah, obviously it's a man. And, and just, like, again, th that idea where, like, there's just men globally that are so desperate to win. Not, not in their own field or category, but just to win. Just, just to win, period. That, that they're now willing to go through extreme lengths to give themselves gender dysphoria because they would give themselves gender dysphoria. There's a reason why the lady ballers didn't lady ball. That yeah, they didn't do that thing. You know, the thing that they said. Oh, it was supposed to be a documentary. We were going to get a whole bunch of men to go into women's leagues, but then we realized that none of the men wanted to do that to actually go on hormone replacement therapy for a period of like two years and experience all the body changes. You know, the the changes in their muscle and and fat redistribution, the growing of breasts. Uh, all that kind of that, that seemed a little too extreme for them so we decided why don't we make it into a shitty comedy instead and that's kind of that's that's how we found this yeah there's a reason for all that as well but the biggest point of all this is that even if she was trans which she is not but even if she had been again what is the problem here that this is an olympic committee of which i'm not the part of the committee I'm, I'm not a sports guy I, I i don't know the science that goes into the selection outside of reading it as a spectator and an observer of what is happening to be like okay interesting there are profound changes that happen to your body after going on hrt for a prolonged period of time so much so that they have deemed it acceptable for people who are trans to participate in sporting events as of right now there's not a single trans woman that has won an olympic gold medal not a single one, even though there, there is this influx of males, biological males trying to compete in the sports and all the biological males are competing in sports. There's only one non-binary person as part of the Canadian soccer team. They were part of the team that won. That's as close as you get. Uh, and that's still not a trans woman. Uh, it, it's again, it's one of those things where there's just you want any reason to just hate women. It doesn't matter if it's trans women, it doesn't matter if it's cis women, like you just want to demean and dehumanize women. And, and this is not something new, by the way. This is something that also intersects deeply with racism. When, when it happens to be a non-white woman who's very successful at their sport, better check the testicles. Better look at that old DNA. We gotta find out if it's an XY chromosome male who is participating. Uh, turns out, no. Turns out uh, this individual is not a male. Uh, that, that's not true. But uh, yeah, well, they have elevated levels of testosterone. Uh, that, that's, that's cheating, it is. <sighs> I mean, like, what, what are we doing here? Like, everyone brings up Michael Phelps for a reason. Michael Phelps has a very unfair advantage at swimming. So much so that it's like, there's a reason why he has all these insane amounts of medals and just dominates the sport in every category. Literally every aspect of his fucking physique looks as if it was designed in a lab to be good at swimming. He certainly does have a biological advantage over, uh, like, most, uh, uh, every other competitor on Earth. Isn't that what you wanted? Didn't you want to find that out? Wasn't that the point of this? Didn't, didn't you want to find out? <laughs> who is the best swimmer maybe globally 
Well, what about a, a competition in which every country can submit their best athletes? They all compete for medals based on how fast they are, and then the fastest person gets the gold thingy. And, and you found that. There he is, the, the Michael Phelps. He's fast, you know? <laughs> like, Usain Bolt, fastest runner. Yeah, you found out. <laughs> you found out who's the best at the thing you wanted to find out, <laughs> you know? That's why chromosomes. They, a reference to she, so the misgendering continues. Now, males typically have XY chromosomes, while females typically have XX chromosomes. However, there is the differences of sex development group of conditions. This is a rare condition, but it involves genes, hormones, and reproductive organs. Some people with DSDs are raised as female, but have XY sex chromosomes and blood testosterone levels in the male range. So you can have elevated testosterone. So that hormone can be different than might be expected now we don't know if Khalif really has DSD uh, the entire world is basically when you're in development in uh, your mother's room uh, sorry mother's wombs or a uh, birthing person's womb as well just for uh, for Anna there um, there are a think of it as a tug of war being pulled between a movement towards what is usually typically associated between one of two genders in the oftentimes binary that people are identified through and this is a combination of a chromosomal influence as well as a hormonal influence so yes the more hormones that are going to be uh, released within your body are going to start to dictate the physical changes of your phenotypes uh, in development and so this this is all at this point well understood there's different chromosomal pairings that you can have such as xxy for example that will result in a set or series of different conditions that you may also have there are people who can have xy chromosome typically associated with men and, and development of a male but because they suppress the release of testosterone in development because of a condition they have all of a sudden you grow up with uh physical features that are often associated with women so you would be born looking like what everyone associates with a woman you will have breasts you will have a vagina or you may have uh you know some other developmental because this is why they call them dsds but you might have some other deve developmental situation in which you have something that you don't find out about till much later in life but you could go your entire life thinking that you're a cis woman, Clean up your room. that you're entire, a biological female. You, you, and then all of a sudden you discover that, yes, uh, you may not have known this, but you actually have uh, differences of sexual development. Uh, you've had that since you were younger. And then at that point, it's like, in what fucking world do a whole bunch of creepy ass dudes on the internet get to determine then that you're a man in their eyes? because you were good at a sport. Because otherwise, they weren't talking about you. you. You were actually performing in that sport for a long time, including the Olympics, without any mention whatsoever. But now it's become the center of the culture war, right? It's collectively making a whole bunch of assumptions and speculation about what this individual- She doesn't. I'm gonna explain why she doesn't. Exactly. Well, I'm saying a lot of people are weighing in that are suddenly becoming experts in all this, but in a statement this week, the IBA said that women did not undergo a testosterone examination, but a separate and recognized test, they say. The statement added that the test and results are confidential. And the IOC, which is overseeing the boxing competition that we're talking about here, does not test for gender, and there never has been any evidence that either Khalif or fellow boxer Lin Yu Ting had XY chromosomes or elevated levels of testosterone. They have competed for years, including at the Tokyo Olympics and several world championships. Khalif, uh, by the way, has lost nine times in international bouts to other women. Um, that said, we have a lot that we're gonna get into, including some of the initial tweets that went viral and made this a massive thing, but what do you think? Okay, so first let's uh, discuss how all this came about in the first place. That'll uh, show you exactly why this nonsense story uh, came up and is completely untrue. Uh, and then we'll get into why. I really feel that it's important to note that while the whole situation would be unacceptable if Khalif was trans or intersex, there's absolutely no evidence that she's either. Yeah, it's it's a narrative that's been run uh, into the ground by the right uh, almost exclusively, again, because of a discredited agency uh, that is not recognized uh, by the Olympic Committee anymore. The Republicans are obsessed with this and how it's going to be their undoing, so that'll be fun. Um, and so. Uh, Jesse Waters said, they say this about her, they say that, they, who's they? So I was curious, who's, who's saying it? Because if it turns out she uh, failed a test, you know, I, uh, and this to the great frustration of a lot of people on the left, I do think past high school that it's okay for organizations, whether it's professional organizations or the Olympics, to do testing and to say, hey, we're going to, uh, even if well, before the left can get mad at it, what do you mean? Before I ho ho and talk about how pure I am, 
Um, what kind of testing? What are we talking about? Are we talking genital inspection? We're talking blood testing for doping. Uh, are we t talking DNA testing? Uh, will we measure the bones? What what kind of testing? Exclude uh, trans athletes. Okay, so a lot of the people on the left will disagree with me on that. Some of uh, obviously some folks on this panel disagree with that. So uh, I'll come back to the politics of that in a second. So did anybody do that in this case? No. So. The people who was the they? It's IBA that that John told you about. And I love how he had to. It's like, is, is this just catering to a new centrist audience? Like, hey, by the way, we're not uh, fully on the left. We call out the left and the you know the wacky leftists who think trans rights are human rights. And also, you know, we, we do call out the right too. And, and this person wasn't in fact trans, so this is uh, you know a big L that uh, y'all should be taking. Logan Paul took the L. Uh, you know, other people should be able to do it too. J.K. Rowling isn't capable, it seems. She's just, oh, rebelling and tripling down. Oh, the black mold told me that it was a trans person. But yeah, ultimately, I mean, that's what's going on here, right? Perfectly centered. President Umar Kremlev. Now, why would the IBA care? Why would Kremlev care? Well, it turns out this boxer beat a Russian female boxer right before the last uh, competition where the Russians really wanted to win, okay? So all of a sudden, the Russian leader of the IBA says, oh, well, golly, gee, I think she might have failed the test. And the other competitive person that might beat the Russian athlete as well. You wanna know who the, not only the largest, but the only sponsor of the IBA was in that event where they claimed that she failed this ambiguous test that they've never actually shared publicly? Gazprom a giant Russian oil company, okay? Do you wanna know where this news story was leaked to? It was TASS, a Russian news agency. And when I saw that, I was like, wait a minute, I thought we weren't paying attention to the Russian news outlets anymore. I thought they were propaganda, etc." And now all of a sudden, everybody's like, well, the Russian news said it, it must be true, okay? So no, this has nothing to do with transgender controversies here in America. No, some crooked Russian dude running the IBA, which has not been, de it was decertified before this controversy, because they're a bunch of crooks, it looks like, okay? And so this guy, he says dumbass things like, oh, the head of the IOC, the Olympic Committee, is, what did he call him, some sort of eunuch or pedophile? So just a total, just nut job, okay? Utter nut job. That's where this story came from. There was, they've, to the best of our ability to tell, there was no test. They've never said what the test was. They said, it's a very reputable test we can't share with you. Or the Russian news agency is reporting it, right? So this is garbage, total dumpster fire of a story. So now, the politics of it. Kamala Harris just took the lead by about five points in a Trump favoring poll. She's caught him in almost all the swing states. She's passed him in Pennsylvania. She made up a 12 point lead in Nevada. The Trump is slip sliding away. He's flailing like crazy. And you Republicans think it's a good idea to focus on the potential testicles of an Algerian boxer? Have at it, Hoss. I can't go for it. You look like idiots. You're making a giant case out of this like, oh, this is the most important thing in the world. Does she have potential testicles or not? Go ahead, go ahead, here's some more rope, hang yourself, go yeah. for it. Okay, politically speaking, this is so dumb of the right wing to focus on this. So please keep but going. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, in my opinion on this, I, I, have, I, I think it's important to know the IOC basically called the IBA out on that. They, they issued a statement that said effectively and exactly that jank that like this was a unilateral decision made by one guy um, and no one's seen those tests. But I will say and I will push back because I do feel like some of the anti-trans athlete speak um, is a slippery slope into broader anti-trans um, behavior and also policing of athletes writ large um, beyond uh, Khalif. Earlier this week, um, a rugby player for the American team, Ilona Marr, was called a man because she's six foot six and a massive unit. And she successfully helped that team win bronze, the very first time an American team has won a medal in rugby. And she was called a man. Why? Because yep. she's big, because she's a rugby player. And so when we start to say that trans people can't play in Olympic sports, right? They can't play in the sport uh, of their their chosen gender. 
then we start to, everyone becomes a cop. And everyone starts to look at everyone's makeup and their muscles and their... Just to be clear, just women, right? Like, the, I don't ever hear the same people who make the argument about, you know, trans women in sports make the same argument about trans men. And, like, I, I like bringing up the fact that there is a trans male boxer who is absolutely crushing it right now. The problem being is that he's having trouble finding people to box because, yeah, the stigma associated uh, with being trans. But, like, it, it's one of those things where it's almost exclusively the domain of, like, you know, combining transphobia and misogyny. You know, this condescending attitude where it's like, oh, well, you know, women will never truly be able to defeat men. And also the, the misandry of thinking that men are, are just like so desperate for a single award or trophy that they're willing to give themselves gender dysphoria and undergo years of hormone replacement therapy just to get that sweet, sweet prize. And while they get that, the, like the eyes of the entire world despise them. And, and that's what, like, men are secretly plotting all the time. And the same thing applies to every other women's space for, oh, I finally found a cheat code to get into this bathroom. All I have to do is take HRT for two years, and then I'll be able to go into any bathroom I want. And it's like, well, you're going to experience a lot of transphobia as well. That's going to be a new experience for you because it kind of seems like, you know, the same people who say this kind of shit are also the same people who are going to scream at you just for being trans cheekbones and what looks different and what they think in their subjective mind. Khalif on the silver match is on the way to win gold. I know. I know. It's uh, it's pretty exciting. I know a woman or a man should and does look I like. And does. so I just want to say that sometimes when we traffic in these ideas that trans people should not be able to participate in sports at these levels, it does lead to things like Jesse Waters openly saying that on primetime television. And I want to just center the, that when we stand with trans people, yes, even trans athletes, it that all goes away and we stand with them no matter what. But yeah. you start to dabble and, and, <laughs> yeah. and you open up, <laughs> you everyone becomes genital police. And I just have to push back on that. And you've yeah, done okay, it, Jake. I totally you've disagree. Done it. Yeah, Patricio Manuel. That's it. Trans man Patricio Manuel picks up his third straight win as a professional boxer 11 years after competing in the women's Olympic trials. And again, you don't hear about, uh, you know, Patricio at all. Like, you never hear them talk about this dude. There's there's no mention of him, no mention of his victories, no mention of him crushing the sport, and, and the unfair advantage that he has. Like, oh, well, is it, is it fair that he's allowed to take testosterone supplements? Is, is that fair? I mean, are the other athletes... Like, you don't hear any of that debate, or, or even fucking conversation. I totally, totally, totally disagree. So, uh, first of all, when you have an extreme Obviously position, you, you have an extreme position that says, no, we don't ever ask anyone. And I, I think the and you also you never hear that whole like tale that's spun by the way in the opposite direction either. It's never like, well, this was clearly a woman, a woman who just wanted a, a harder challenge, I suppose. She wanted to play on difficulty mode uh, hard, and so she decided that the only way to truly be respected in sports is to become a man and then fight against the men and beat the fuck out of men. You know, she's just a man beater, and that's that's what you never hear that either, right? Because again, it's it, all of this speaks so much to this deeply ingrained paternalistic kind of like. Oh, but women can't get hurt when they play sports. They they should only play non-contact because they're delicate sex and, and they're very tender and they, they make us the, the soup and the sandwiches and they cook and they clean and, and they're pretty and they wear the makeup. I, I need them to look as feminine as possible at all times and like all this kind of shit. It's like they, they should be able to look however they want to look. Why are we still policing this? 2024, the year of our Lord. Position is actually absurd. Uh, they don't do any genetic testing. They don't do any testing. So you could, since they don't do any testing at all, you can just walk in, call yourself a female, not be trans. Trans do people it. are actually do it, Jane. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> like goddamn, who is doing this? And I, I also ask, who is this for? Who is this segment for? Like, who are you appealing to? Who's like, oh yeah, that's true. Actually, you know, women could just walk in at any time, and if they don't genetically test them, if they don't find the chromosomal imbalance, then they won't know. Like, okay, first off, this shit already happens. It usually happens to black athletes. Uh, you know, the trans misogynoir uh, that black athletes have to, uh, you know, undergo, where they're constantly accused of being men simply because they're very good at the sport they're supposed to be very good at. It's like, oh my god, her levels of testosterone are higher than everyone else. And it's like, uh, higher than uh, other athletes? Yes, uh, as are all women's levels of testosterone from all other women, just like they are from all men. There, there are, <laughs> there's going to be men with much higher levels of testosterone and much lower levels of testosterone than you. 
Like, I, I, what, what level does it start to become like, ah, uh, yes, at this point we have to say that, unfortunately, even though you're a cis woman, identified as a woman at birth, uh, you have a vagina. I've inspected it multiple times to know. It is, in fact, a vagina, not a hidden penis, so we, we've gotten that far. But, unfortunately, yeah, I know, you, you, you have XX chromosomes, too. I know, we tested the DNA. All of it, I mean, all, all across the board, you are woman. But your high levels of testosterone, it's just, it, yeah. I did, yeah, that's just kind of mannish, you know? So, you can't play. You can't be good at the sport you're supposed to be good at. Okay, yeah, all right, well, you can say it, but then what's going to happen? Rugby, Somebody's going to do it, and they're going to get away with it, and then everybody's going to be furious. Okay. Fucking thank you. Like, I'm glad someone's finally saying to people when they bring this talking point up, like, then do it. What's, like, couldn't you be an Olympic athlete now? Haven't you just unlocked the code? Has no one thought of this? Oh my god. Yeah, go on HRT for two years, become a trans woman, and, and then suddenly just go and, and win in every category. As certainly you will. Yeah. Again, you're just going to dominate all these cis women. That That's really condescending too. It's like, I'm sorry, but I couldn't beat a single woman, not one, in any Olympic sport. I, I can say that without, like, at all having to test this. I know this because they're professional athletes. And they train their entire lives for this shit. Okay? <laughs> There's no, even if I, I sneak in, I go on HRT simply for the, the joy of getting into the Olympics and I win the gold. Uh, no. I'm still going to get my fucking ass. I wouldn't even qualify, okay? <laughs> I'm going to get absolutely, yes, curling included, shooting included, even even the non, you know, physical endurance sports. Luge. I'm not I'm not going to be uh, just an instantly better loser because I was born with a penis. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, ladies. I got the advantage here. <laughs> wait, wait, has he had bottom surgery? Oh, we don't know. Test him, test him. Oh, he's winning. He's kicking ass. Fuck, why didn't we think of this? <laughs> okay, it's, all right, I, I can't stand it. And it doesn't help trans people at all to have these extreme positions. Oh, yeah, 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 don't test anyone. Just take their word for it. I think it's terrible politics. It's not a That's not what is being advocated for by any pro-LGBTQ plus person. It's, 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 the Olympic Committee are the ones that set these standards. It's more just like, hey, by the way, the Olympic Committee is okay with this. Why are the rest of you not? It's the same thing with, like, gender-affirming care. It's like the entire medical community agrees upon this. They they agree in unison, every single one. That Like, okay, why don't you? And if you don't, learn about it and get the fuck out of the fucking doctor's office. That's all there is to get the fuck out of the change room. Like, w w what part does, does this play outside of reinforcing bigotry? It, reinforcing misogyny, reinforcing transphobia. It, it's just always the same two things. Super condescending towards women. Ah, yes, but the, the very concept of a woman being slapped by a man has, has upset me so much. And they're so weak. Those frail women, they'll never be able to outrun a man. Men are just so much better at everything. Let, position. It comes from a position of human rights, and it does help it's all It's not people. a human right what to you, compete what in the you other see there, genders What you see sport. there is when... What it absolutely is to be validated and recognized for your gender, especially in a society that condemns you for it. Absolutely it is. That's one of the reasons why this has become a focal point for the right, because they want to dehumanize trans people. They want to force them into different bathrooms, you know, from the classroom on up. They want to force them into different change rooms, different prisons, different, like, they want to be like, you are man or you are woman. You will be treated as such. You will do as such. This is about the sports. Uh, this is about the prison conditions. Oh, this is about the bathroom conditions. Oh, the sexual assault possibilities. It's like, if you care about sexual assault, very easy to look this up. It's being done by cis men. Biological males. They're the sexual assaulters. They're the ones doing all of the sexual assault of women in bathrooms. Cis men. Biological men. Yeah. The trans people are more often the victims of sexual assault and abuse than the perpetrators. They're, they're often the victims, too, in bathrooms by cis men again. Cis men. Biological males. You just saw our women, our biological women, being attacked for being trans because of the anti-trans athletic narrative that has already festered and has now come for these women. And so what are the women to do? Say, I'm not a man. In fact, screw, like, I'm not a trans man. Are you kidding me? No. We all stand in solidarity together. That's how we actually fight the right when it comes to their bull crap uh, uh, culture war. Thank you so much. Uh, that's the... the she put it perfectly.
Yes, absolutely. Did this whole kind of like, well, I, I do think we need to placate the fascists and the far right in that they are, yeah, not entirely all there. Not not advocating for the greatest of things. I'm not not on board with the whole you know exterminationist project that kind of stuff. But like honestly, the radical trans agenda too is really asking for a lot. You know, human rights. That that whole thing being recognized for the gender you are. That that aspect. That that's you know. So both sides. That you know lead nowhere, and yeah. it doesn't yeah. serve. Look, I understand, Jake. You're in the majority. You're in the majority. I'm in the minority. Most people disagree that trans athletes should participate in Olympic sports. Most people don't agree with me. But hell, man, I'm willing to stand on a hill that is unpopular and fight for people uh, and for their human rights. Yeah, uh, look, we could do, spend an hour debating this, and I have in the past. But when. Not really, though. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Oh, she's amazing. Also, what a great, what a great little freeze frame. Oh, that's going in the collection. <laughs> debate, more of an agreement. Okay, whatever. Uh, I'm happy to debate anybody about it. I think it's, I don't agree. Okay. Uh, and I, you're never going to get me to agree by saying it's the left wing position. It's the no pro-trans position. I don't think it's a pro-trans position. She, she never once invoked political ideology. Not once. This is just, again, it, that's not true. It wasn't like, you have to agree with this because you're a leftist. If you don't do this, you're not the one true leftist. Yeah, so say it, Lance. He's so pure and ho ho. He's, he's going to condemn you if you don't uh, say the, the thing. Like, we're all fucking wrong and a ton of shit. And, and I've said this before, like a decade ago, I would have had the worst possible fucking takes on trans people because I wouldn't, uh, I had no knowledge. I didn't understand them as much. I like didn't truly know what being trans was. It's one of those things like, yes, I've had to learn. Okay. And yet another one of the sissies who's had to learn, but like any, anyone can, you have access to the same internet as I do. You, you can do the research. Again, this is something where it's like, well, uh, I, I don't know if this is a controversial opinion. But it does seem like the entirety of the medical community agrees on gender affirming care. Uh, so, what's your take? Ooh, me versus all the doctors, not just some of the doctors, all of them, all the scientists. Ye. Ah, uh, well, I'm gonna do my research. I'll get back to you. you didn't At all. You just offer, At all. Offer a platform. Okay. You don't all right. have to. Agree. All right. So when your opponent is in the middle of doing something radical, step out of the way and let them do it instead of stepping in the way and saying, "Hey, I'm more radical." Uh, Okay, I think it's terrible. But what's the radical thing? That's like that's kind of the point, right? If it's like you want to do this perfectly centrist thing, this appeal to right-wing viewers as well as left-wing viewers, and that you're like, hey, by the way, right-wingers, just so you know, you were wrong. Take the L. Uh, this was not a trans person, okay? This is 100% was a, uh, as you called him, uh, biological femoid. Uh, so, you know, just take the L on that one. You're wrong. And hey, on the other side of things, I just want to say that, like, I agree with policies that prevent trans people from playing in professional sports uh, because they have an unfair advantage. Uh, well, I want to say specifically trans women. Yeah, don't really don't really know about that whole trans man debate stuff yet but yeah so uh, extremist positions though right so both sides are being extreme one is like hey trans rights are human rights they deserve to be validated for who they are uh, and the other side is like uh, we don't want you to exist anymore <laughs> terrible politics it's terrible for trans people I think it's terrible for the LGBTQ community and I think it's terrible for the uh, people who are looking to defeat Trump so can we please by the way across the board if you're not part of the community and you're trying to advocate for or on the behalf of them you have to listen to the community that, that's one of those things right so if you're cis like myself uh you know and the same with jank uh you know same with everyone on this panel actually if you're cis you should be listening to trans people and trans advocates as well as doctors and scientists that have very thoroughly backed up their own statements and advocacy and that yes they deserve uh to have the same access to human rights as everyone else uh, and then it's not on your terms either right i don't get to to dictate it. I know it's just like, oh, he's so pure. He just has to advocate for what he thinks is the pure left. No, it's that like, as a cis person, you don't get to set the terms and conditions. You don't get to be like, okay, fine. I am for trans rights, uh, comma, uh, for it, asterisk. Yeah, no, trans rights are human rights for sure. You know, just see the, the small print at the bottom. Get out of the way and let the Republicans do the dumb things. I think. I, you're, you're laying out a hypothetical that is conceivable. Someone can conceive of it happening. But I think the reason you keep having Republicans over and over, by the way, there's already another case of this in boxing. You identified Francesca, a case in rugby. 
there are so few trans athletes that the right constantly invents trans athletes to attack. That is how hypothetical their problem is, that they can't even talk about it actually happening. They just keep pointing at people who aren't trans and saying they're trans. In sports, it even not just, in, Michelle Obama exactly. gets to be trans right. because they need someone to be trans. The wife of Emmanuel Macron has to be trans because they need someone to be trans. They invent trans people because trans people do not constantly transgress and ruin their lives, so they can't actually point to them. They have to invent fictional trans people to talk about. That's exactly my <laughs> point, and I totally agree with John on that, even if we might disagree on the other things. So my point is, at most, this affects seven people in the country. So I'm not saying Wait, that you what? should no. abandon those seven people. We have a lot. <laughs> okay, first off, there's still going to be in a population of 338 million, even if it was like 1% of the population, millions. Millions of trans people, and of those millions of trans people, yes, a lot of them do play sports across the board. They might not be all professional athletes, that's true, that's true, but again, this idea where it's like, okay, so in theory, I agree with you, uh, there's there's like seven trans people, so we shouldn't shit all over them. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, I think to appease those seven people, do we then throw uh, the entire LGBTQ plus movement under the bus? And it's like, no, no, we can, we can have it all, we can have it all. We can advocate on the behalf of trans people. We can advocate for pro LGBTQ plus issues. We can advocate for the liberation of all people. And even if it doesn't happen to be a large percentage of the population, still agree that morally and philosophically, in principle, yes, it makes sense to to not stop your advocacy at a point where it's like, well, with terms and conditions, you know, like I, I, I I'm I'm not a segregationist. I'm 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 against that. But like. Separate water fountains, it did uh, make shorter lines for everybody. I'm, I'm not saying it's good. Okay, I agree with you, it was a bad thing, all right? But I'm just saying that maybe more people were able to see a movie if certain people had to sit in the back of the theater. But I, not that it's good. I, I agree. Uh, segregation, bad. Okay, Jim Crow, bad. Less difference of opinion on how to help those seven people, okay? But if the Republicans are making a giant deal out of how much they hate those seven people, Okay, let them punch themselves in the face over and over and over again. So I, I, I'm, that's why. I but then also, why hand them an olive branch while they're doing it? <laughs> they're just going like that, and then why be like, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm on board with you that like trans people shouldn't be allowed to play in professional sports. <laughs> like, <laughs> politically, guys, do not get mired in this muck. Right? Make fun of them for inventing trans people to hate. You're totally right about that, John. They, they can't, they hate so much that they have to invent problems that don't even exist. And then make fun of them for that. I think that's a much better political strategy. But you did the same thing to Francesca, right? When, when you were talking about this and then you were just like, hey, by the way, just like, I just want to let you know, like it's an extremist position to say that like if we don't test people and they suddenly get inside and you know, we don't test the chromosomes or whatever, that there will be men who try to participate in, you know, female categories. And it's like, but that's not true. That, like, go do it. Go, 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 go be the world champion at any sport of your choosing. You, you can win gold in any single competition. You get to pick even things you're not really into. Hammer throw, I don't know, fencing. But you get to go win any medal you want simply because you figured out the cheat code. And by the way, I found the quote of the idiot who runs the uh, IBA. He called the head of the IOC a, a chief sodomite. Jesus Christ. Okay, and, and so okay. look, when the Republicans are like, oh, I love that guy who called the other guy a chief sodomite. Great, wonderful. Here, come, just tell everybody, because you look so stupid and hateful. Don't call them weird, though. Um, I want to make a couple of quick points about this specific case, though. Um, so on her and her record, so like when you find out that she has that lost nine <laughs> times, that could influence your evaluation title. of whether it's fair for her to compete. When you uh, find out that in her 37 victories, she has only five knockouts, it goes against the uh, attempted narrative that she is She-Hulk and no person can stand against them. But the issue with that is we can't expect them to know that because none of the people, and we can show you J.K. Rowling and Elon Musk and Riley Gaines and Donald Trump and Valentina Gomez and Jesse Waters and literally all of them complaining about this, none of them give one single quantum of a damn about women's boxing. I wanna be super clear about that. None of them watched 
a boxing match. They didn't watch this one. None of them no. even after this will watch a single one. They don't care about women's boxing more than they care about literally any woman's sport to be very, very clear. And on the evaluation of what is a woman, a question they love to ask, they kept saying it's not a social concept, uh, construct. It's not a frame of mind. It's not what you believe yourself to be. It's not an identity. It's in your pants. It's your genitals. Oops, that's not good enough. It's not that because uh, she has too much testosterone. That's yeah. it. It's the hormones. If you change your hormones, then it doesn't matter if you were born with a vagina. You're not anymore because your hormones changed. Now you're a man. But they don't believe that hormone replacement therapy changes your gender. They've never given ground on that. And suddenly that's their retreat point is if your hormones are out of whack, it doesn't matter what's in your pants. The entire thing is ridiculous. And the final point I want to make, and I apologize. I've been thinking about this for like 48 hours straight. Abigail Normal actually has a really good point. Like, if they did care about that, they would have celebrated every single boxer who's ever defo uh, defeated Khalif, like, in her entire career. It would have been like, if she was defeated, someone, a woman, a biological female, defeated the XY chromosome male. Whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> if they wanted to talk about protecting women. There's a rapist at the Olympics right now. There There's is. a volleyball player who raped a 12-year-old. They don't got anything to say about that because yeah. they don't care because they're silence. not paying attention. But also to be clear, if they wanted to talk about how important female athletes are and their amazing accomplishments. Yeah, I know. I'm so happy he's gone. It's also such a profoundly fucked up story because it's not like, uh, well, this is someone who was accused of some pretty uh, terrible stuff, this man. It's like, n no, th th this was a dude who had jail time for raping a 12 year old what are we doing here like is that not disqualifying you know or what about the fact that like you know the israeli team uh, is participating in the olympics in the middle of them committing a genocide when they have killed 350 palestinian athletes like sorry over 350 like that's that, that, that's also worthy of some controversy is it not not you and all the like genital inspectors running around being like, oh, about the chromosomes. And all that. And if they could ever bring themselves to do that without it being about a trans athlete, Katie Ledecky became the most decorated American woman in Olympic history. Simone Biles is now the most decorated female gymnast in world history. The literal goat. They did amazing historic things, and not a single one of these people cares at all about it. Not interested nope. whatsoever because women are irrelevant. Oh, also shooting. Holy fuck, do women ever dominate shooting? <laughs> I'm sorry, boys. There's no biological advantage there. <laughs> There's nothing you can do except concentrate and pay attention. <laughs> That's really. <laughs> but women shooters just so far outclass men. It's pretty funny. And all of this is a defense mechanism from a movement of misogynists that know how regressive they look when it comes to women oh, best and are, are women. constantly Absolutely desperately are. looking for a shallow cloak that allows them to pretend that they give a damn about women for even a single second. Look, I'm, I honestly, I contend that women would honestly start to dominate a lot of sports you take for granted if they were allowed to... Uh, get raised in the same way male athletes are if there wasn't this kind of assumption that's always put upon you know men you could be, grow up to be a hockey god son and and for women it's like oh you could grow up to be a teacher or a nurse or a cook you, you could you could do that you know kind of thing I, I think that there would be a lot more uh women dominating categories and also for uh, like in leagues in which women uh, are allowed to participate in uh, against male counterparts, but are still incredibly misogynistic and male dominated, like chess, for example, if, if women were as encouraged uh, and were as, um, I would say, helped along the way, just like, you know, from uh, scholastically uh, to having training to having, uh, you know, masters be able to train them. I think you would start to see the same thing in chess as well. I think you would start to see women absolutely dominate chess. Um, it's one of those things where it's, it's still just such a fucking massive ass boys club. But I, I, I contend across the board. I think dudes have to get this idea out of their head that they're just in, inherently going to be better at women at any physical task. And, and that's just like it's utterly absurd. There's so many stronger women than you. There's so many women who would beat the fuck out of you. I, again, like there's not a single competition in which I feel I could beat any female athlete. <laughs> like that's all this is. Amen.
Yeah. And uh, also, just a correction, it's cisgender, not biological. So let's just be able to say cisgender women. We should normalize cisgender. That's easy I enough agree. for us to do. I will only say, that when I say that, I'm saying it's the way they use that term. I don't sure. use that term, yeah. but they say that's what they want, and then it's not good enough in the end. Yeah. And, and I do know it's a minority, and all I have to say, I'm all I am saying is that if and when there is a trans athlete, can we stand with them and can we see and tie our own liberation together and our own defense against this bigotry? And that is a breaking point for a lot of liberals. You'll see a lot of like, oh yeah, I'm a trans ally, trans rights are human rights. Until a woman wins a competition, all of a sudden it's like, ooh, yeah, but like, I don't know how I feel about this. And like, yeah, uh, maybe things have gone too far. Uh, like it's totally, I was totally fine actually with trans women competing in the, all these categories up until they win. It's when they win, then all of a sudden it's like, ooh, yeah, trans rights are human rights for sure. But um, yikes together and me as a feminist me as a cisgender woman i believe that my own liberation my fight against that misogyny that john's talking about if someone were to call me a man say there's i'm not a man but also i stand with trans people i stand with trans athletes and i hope that we will see that eventually one day even for those seven people i do think it matters yeah all right La last thing i'll say on it is uh, similar to what john was saying imani khalifa has lost uh, nine matches but they're convinced, oh my God, this is a giant issue. She's dominating the sport. So when it, I was gonna make a similar point about Lidecker, she, she won the 1500 meter race by 17 seconds. That's insane. It's unheard of. There was no one else in the frame. It looked like there was no one else in the pool. The t top, do you know how many of the top 20 times in- Oh, it's because it's condescending. Calling, uh, you know, trans women, uh, sorry, calling cis women biological women is intentionally supposed to dehumanize trans women through the process, right? And that they are actually biological men pretending to be women. In uh, in the top swimming race, Katie Leidecker has come in number one. In other words, she owns the record of the top 20, all 20. She has all 20 of the fastest times, okay? She's unbelievable. So they don't care who's actually dominant That's in the wild. sport. They don't actually care about the competition. Oh, well, well, look, man, if you have a man, you can compete and blah, blah, blah. Katie Leidecker's killing them, no matter who's in the race, right? They don't care, oh, that it's unfair that she has a genetic advantage because she's better than them, right? That's the whole point of the Olympics. Mm -hmm. All they care about is how do we get people to focus all their hatred on people that are- Also, like, look at the post of Pierce Morgan. He's like posting pictures of Khalif straight up saying like, oh, if that's a woman, I'm an aardvark and all this kind of shit. Um, and it's like, this also goes into the very idea of, again, misogynists, men, uh, and racists trying to define what a woman has to look like. And, and you know, that, that fucking tail is old as time. This old caked in patriarchal shit where it's just like, if a woman has muscles, she if she has muscle definition, all of a sudden, well, that's kind of mannish. And you see that play out with all the weirdos on the internet too. They'll always do this for like rage bait where it's like, if you like this woman, you're gay. And it's like the fucking, the most hot smoke show you've ever seen in your life. And you're just like, wait, what the fuck? It's like, yeah, look at this shot. Then you lift the shirt and she's like all muscular. And it's like, yeah, she's still fucking hot as fuck. Wait, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah I, I I don't know uh, how to help you. <laughs> I mean I don't think it's real. I, I think a lot of those accounts are just they they have their own fetish, which is just to be uh, humiliated on the internet. I think that's it. And then we're all just uh, enabling it. We're in the LGBTQ community, so the Khalif is not dominant in the sport. It doesn't matter. They're just using it as an excuse to attack that community because their whole point is hatred. That's why this is so dumb politically. They they keep assuming that the average American is as hateful as they are, and they're incorrect. Let's step out of the way and let them clown themselves. Thanks. Honestly, I, I couldn't be prouder of uh, Francesca there because she really centered the whole conversation around the like. And if she was, so what? Honestly, 
Like, I know it's like, hey, you can basically get a really big W here because everyone fucked up. They got too excited. Even Logan fucking Paul, the crypto scammer, had to back out. The guy who's, like, completely fine fleecing his fans for every last penny they have. Like, that dude was like, oh, shit. Okay, well, maybe this isn't the greatest evil in history guy who, like, films uh, people unaliving themselves in the suicide forest in Japan. But either way, uh, yeah, he backed down. J.K. Rowling, too much black mold. She'll never she'll never look away. Um, so there's, there's no help in her. But... But like, yeah, th sure, uh, you can laugh at the right and Republicans for being categorically wrong here. That is true. But also the bigger conversation should be, why does this keep happening? And usually, why does this happen to women of color? Why is it always when, like, a woman is dominating a sport, uh, something else has to be going on here? Uh, is this person intersex? Uh, do they have differences of sexual development? Do they have very high... That's the same thing, by the way. Do they have very high levels of testosterone? Uh, do they have the XY chromosome, the, the most powerful of all the chromosomal combinations, you know? And how does that affect the, the outcome? Like, if she had turned out to be trans, so what? So what? Did, did she fall within the guidelines uh, permissible by the Olympic Committee? The same guidelines that every single athlete has to undergo? Uh, was she blood tested uh, for, like, steroids and other stuff like that? Like, every other athlete? Yes? Okay. Well, then what are we doing here? What business, again, is this of mine? Where, where, where do I come into the conversation? I don't consent. Random superstar athletes really good at what they do? Uh, how dare you? Yes, this is now a culture war issue, I say. Like, no, it, fucking, they're really good at the thing they're supposed to be good at. That, that, that should be amazing and impressive. Someone is very good at the thing they're supposed to be very, very good at. Uh, that's cool, you know? Jake is basically saying the right uh, is wrong on this one because she's cis, but correct overall. That's a win for the left. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, she lost her fight. Oh, no. That's too bad. Well, uh, hey, transphobes. Is this over now? That a cis woman beat a cis woman? Are you all gonna shut the fuck up? Like, Jesus. <laughs> ah, you're, you're, you're beating up the biologicals. How the fuck? Should look at that. It's an XY penis haver. It's like, oh, she lost. Because she she's a boxer and they lose. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Other athletes can be better than you. Looks like, looks like she lost. You know? <laughs> like she has in the past at other Olympics, by the way. <laughs> so does this go back to being normal again? Are, are all of you just going to tone down the rhetoric and be like, uh, I think we kind of kind of went a little, little too hardcore there. Yeah. Is, is that the deciding factor? Because that also shouldn't matter, by the way. Because, yeah, th there are trans women who participate in fighting events, and they also lose to cis women. Because professional fighters are professional. They're all good at what they do. Doesn't matter if they're cis. Doesn't matter if they're men. Doesn't matter if they're women. They're all. Uh, I grow so wary of this conversation. And it's such just it's like it's such an obvious like entry point to transphobia because if you it's like if you act like Michael Knowles and you just go like we should eradicate trans people from society and all that kind of shit, everyday people, even like some conservatives, are gonna be like, no, that's Nazi shit. We don't want to kill all trans people. No. But I just think that like there has to be a conversation about what is or what isn't fair for women in women's sports. And yeah, you've got an entry point there, right? Like it's it's hard to play defense when someone's saying, like, I just don't want to see women get beat up by men. Do you? Do you want to see women be physically abused by men? Is that what you want? Or the same with the bathrooms. Like, do you want women to be sexually assaulted in bathrooms? Is that what you want? No. No, I'm saying the people who do the sexual assaults, you're running cover for them. If, if you're like, we have to go after trans people because they're assaulting to the bathroom, they're often, more often, I should say, the victims of the sexual assault by the number one culprit, which is cis men. If you want, you want to go after a group, go after cis men. Cis men are the ones committing it. Yeah. Hey, if you'd like to unlock secret bonus episodes as well as uncensored content, go to patreon.com slash theserves. This show is produced by Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hagbard Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multimondi, Omni, Political Poppy, Preston Kroll, Quiet185, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Cernicus, Stellar Gwynn, Sebastian Demel, Travis McClinton, Trincell, Words Greenwood. With additional support coming from all of these amazing human beings right here.